Yes, thank you for joining me for another edition of A to Z with Janome. And today's Janome Instagram Live, Janome HQ Instagram Live, is brought to you by the letter L, which are our beading feet. We have an L1 narrow foot and an L2 wider foot. Sandra is anxious because she is a beater, so she wants to Oh, fantastic. Oh, then this is wonderful, Sandra. This is why, again, I always say you deserve a gold star <laughs> for all your enthusiasm. So yes, thank you. Uh, I said to Tanya, you know, our Parts and Notions coordinator, Tanya Denye, does these uh, beautiful um, uh, drawings, and I said to her, these remind me of the Wonder Twins, the L1 and L2, remind me of the Wonder Twins. Do you remember those? From Super Friends, Zan and Jaina twins, they did Wonder Twin Powers Activate. So it's very cute. So yes, thank you all for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. So this is my cute little sample uh, that I have done. So the beading foot is great to put on a variety of beads. It doesn't have to be the string of pearls as I have here, but it can certainly be yarn. That's how I love using the beading feet, uh, that you can couch down or like zigzag down some yarn with that, uh, the feet as well. So they're really, really cute to use. So uh, again, available from your Janome dealer, the beading feet uh, the L1 narrow foot or the L2 um, wide groove foot uh, comes available in a separate blister pack from your Janome dealer. And you can see here then you can sew on uh, with a very simple zigzag stitch a variety of this is a very fine um, like baby yarn or there's the uh, cotton uh, cording that I use uh, that I get at a big school, uh, spool from the grocery store. So um, supplies don't have to you know cost a lot. Uh, again another yarn or that's like the soutache or the the rat tail cording so it can be very beautiful very decorative so that's with the narrow l1 foot that takes up to two millimeter wide uh, beads or cords and then the wider groove the l2 foot uh, takes from 2.5 to 4 millimeters wider so there's uh, i didn't have a narrow string of pearls so that's why i don't have any uh, uh string of beads here for the narrow but um they will take a, a string of beads, again, just slightly more narrow for two millimeters. So then the wider one takes um, bigger uh, strings of beads and pearls. Or again, I love using it for a variety of yarns, particularly this big fuzzy yarn. It's so fun because then even your, if your thread doesn't even match your yarn, it really doesn't matter. It just sinks right in there. So it's very fun to apply any of these yards or beads with your beading feet. They make it very accurate, very quick and easy. And as always, there's instructions on the back of the blister packs as well, so that will guide you through exactly how wide your zigzag should be, because that's very important, especially with the string of pearls. You don't want to be hitting those pearls. So if you want to follow me down here to the machine, here are our feet. The L2 is slightly bigger uh, for bigger yarns, bigger uh, beads. L1 is the more narrow one, the shorter foot. And there's, again, a more narrow groove on the back of the foot there. But by having the big groove in the uh, bottom of the feet, that's the L2, so it's nice and big. So that's, again, the secret of keeping those uh, rows of beads and uh, yarns perfectly even as you zigzag them down to a garment or a, you know, tote bag or even around a quilt. Like, why not? You can do this in a variety of applications. Now, if possible, I always recommend if you can take these feet after you order them from your Janome dealer, if you can take these feet to like the craft store with you preferably because you just have to make sure this uh, string of pearls for example is way too big it's not going to go through that foot at all so I can't use this I don't know what millimeter width this uh, string of pearls is again the the wide foot will take up to four millimeters wide um, so you just have to be sure that will it fit easily through the bottom of the groove this will not so no I can't use those for with my beating foot but this row for example 
yes, that fits through just perfectly. Or actually, I would be sewing it down <laughs> this way. It, so that fits perfectly. So again, if you can take these feet with you to the store uh, to double check that everything will fit through. Uh, most of my yarns uh, come from, in fact, all of my yarns come from uh, the big discount store, the big D store. Uh, so again, not a lot of money, but uh, it's so fun. There's a, a variegated yarn. And again, I, can I fit that through? Yes, no problem. So then I can easily attach that uh, on the machine. So I'm going to clip in my foot. She also uses the feet for piping sometimes. Oh, oh, sure, absolutely, because then it has that big groove. Now, again, we do have a dedicated uh, a piping foot, but yes, you could totally use these as well because of that lovely groove. Then you could totally take whatever cording and wrap your fabric around it and make your piping that way. So, absolutely. They're very versatile feet. That's what I love um, having them all. So I've attached my, my wide one uh, to the machine. Now, if you want to come up here to the screen, now really any machine, I've got the nine millimeter wide feet, but there is a, again, seven millimeter wide as well. So double check with your Janome dealer to get the correct foot. Um, so, but basically a, a wide variety of Janome machines will be able to use these beading feet. And all I just need is a regular zigzag. But um, maybe your machine uh, looks similar in that you might have like an M or an L or an R next to your variety of zigzag choices. The R simply means that it orients the needle to the right. And in this case, I don't want to use this R uh, option. The L means it orients the needle to the left and I don't want to use that option either. And again, on the back of your blister pack, it explains that you want to use a center needle position for your zigzag, which is the M for middle. So it's going to zigzag both to the left and right uh, evenly. If I use the uh, R selection that orients the needle to the R, for example, it's gonna zigzag from the right needle position to the middle. And certainly if I use yarn, that's not the end of the world, but if I use a string of pearls, oh no, I'm gonna land my needle right in the middle of that string of pearls. So that's why, no, I don't wanna use uh, either the right uh, needle orientation or, and I don't wanna use the left needle orientation. That would start my zigzag over at the left and swing to the middle. That's gonna, again, strike my string of pearls or my beads. So I want to use the middle needle position, the center needle position. So I can adjust as well the width of that zigzag and to make sure that it's not gonna hit the pearls or the beads. And I can also adjust the length of that zigzag so it can go around my bead. So that's great. So again, if, um, a ver variety of Janome machines can use these feet. Now I happen to be using the Continental M7 here. So I've got the um, advantage of using, using the sewing applications, which is this uh, t-shirt here. So I can just click the t-shirt and then the sewing applications is like the machine asking us, well, what do you want to do? So I want to sew a, a string of pearls, for example. So up here, I've got a little plus presser foot because these are optional presser feet. So I can find the various sewing applications that are optional presser feet in this plus presser foot um, icon. And again, uh, the number of machines that we have sewing applications, there's uh, again the um, Skyline S9 and the 15,000, uh, the S7, all have sewing applications. So it would be the plus presser foot option. And then here I've got a beading option, so I can just press that and automatically the machine is set up um, ideally for the narrow groove with a more narrow stitch, or then this is the wide groove, the L2, so I've got a wider zigzag. But then again, I can always go back in here and adjust my width and my length of my zigzag uh, if needed. So I am just going to for now leave it on the default setting, and I'm going to take my little uh, string of pearls here to do a sample. So as always, whenever you're doing a new technique and a new foot, you're going to do lots of samples and see what works best. 
So already I've done a couple of tests here and I thought, oh, this would be cute to use, not only just as a, a surface embellishment of your garment or your tote bag or whichever, but I could fold down this, M, uh, this edge here to make it like a hem. So this could be a hem edge of my pocket, let's say, or this could be the hem edge of my, whoops, uh, head, hem edge of my sleeve or of my jacket or of my skirt. Uh, I thought those would, that would be quite beautiful. So it's really fun that you can experiment uh, where to um, apply all of these beads and these pearls. So I'm going to always start with a longer length as well so I can get it under my foot and leave a little tail at the back. And again, when I drop my foot, can I easily feed that row of pearls or uh, beads under my foot? Yes. So then I, I know I'm good to go. Nothing's going to get held up anywhere. So when I do my zigzag, very important, especially because these pearls can easily, um, you know, break my needle if I hit in the wrong spot. So I can slowly, I've adjusted the speed, you know, my Continental M7 here will stitch 1300 stitches per minute, but now would be a, a good time to reduce that <laughs> and double check. And even if you're really concerned, start very slowly um, turning the flywheel. So then you really see the width of that zigzag stitch and where it's going to be in relation to your pearls or your beads. Now, a good time to use perhaps would be these optic magnifiers. There is a set specifically for the Continental M7 because of the, the bigger arm, basically, um, that is the silver part uh, that's needed in order to uh, position the optic magnifiers where they um, need to be. But there's also optic magnifiers that fit on some of the other machines as well. So again, you can always check with your Janome dealer, but having the optic magnifiers are great because then you can really get in and see exactly. I don't know. Can you see in that? <laughs> so you can really, uh, yeah. So then you can really see exactly where that needle is going to land in relation to your string of pearls or your beads. So um, for sake of the camera, I will not use them. That may be a little weird. Um, but again, I go nice and slow and see where does the needle hit in relation to my string of pearls. So I see that it's going right in between and then it goes, it goes in between on one side and then it goes around the pearl on the other. So actually that's okay. If I wanted to, I could adjust, I could adjust the length a little bit and see if it goes around the pearl a little more. Now, if you use a matching thread or you're going to use maybe invisible thread or the Invisafill, and again, once I know that it's gonna clear, then I can um, speed up a little bit more, but I still wouldn't want to be stitching 1300 stitches per minute with these uh, personally. I would rather just take my time. But again, you see how easy that is just to let the foot do its work. So there is my beautiful row. And even with uh, widening my zigzag stitch when I got down to about here, and I'm using this like teal colored um, our iris 100% cotton uh, quilting thread, I really don't see my uh, threads there at all. If I use like a white or a, a really soft uh, ivory thread or again, invisible thread, I wouldn't even see that at all but it really turned out beautifully. And again, I thought as a hem edge, that would be really quite beautiful. So it's again, very fun to do just rows and rows and rows of your pearls or beads of any kind. Or how about doing something like this? I like using the beading feet with yarn. And instead of binding, this is like a little set of coasters I made just out of scraps of fabric very quickly. And instead of binding this little coaster, I decided, oh, how about I twist some yarn and then I couched it on with the beading feet. So just a, a wide zigzag butted up to, I butted my yarn up to the edge of my little quilt sandwich and zigzagged that edge. And from the backside, 
Again, looks perfectly nice and neat and clean, and it was really simple to do. And I just decided to put this little handle so I can hang up my little coasters. Um, but that was a great project to do. Or I love doing it when I uh, do my Janome presentations and, and I hold up all my samples. This is a sample of all the extra optional uh, presser feet that you can get in your sewing applications. So the cording foot, which I demoed, and the pin tuck foot, um, they are coming up uh, next week. They will be the, uh, ooh, what are they, the end feet. So they're coming up next week, next Wednesday, I believe. And, and then this, this was the beading foot that I used to put down this yarn here. But I also like using it to, again, finish the edges here of my sample. So maybe this could be the edges of your quilt or a table runner or even on a bag. Again, I didn't want to bind it, so I just butted up the yarn close to the edge of the bag and zigzagged it all down or onto the <laughs> edge of my sample. Uh, and again, I did just uh, one yarn there, one strand of yarn there zigzagged on. Looks perfectly fine and clean, stops the edges from raveling. Or again, there's another where I use two rows butted up. So I did one row zigzag together, and then I laid on the second row and then zigzagged it down as well. And again, nice and neat and clean. And then for your serger, you know, on uh, Wednesdays, Janome HQ Live, I talked about sergers and the some attachments you can get for your serger. You can get a beading foot attachment for your serger. And again, I couched this yarn on using that beading foot on my serger. So it was really simple, very quick and easy. Maybe you can see the uh, thread there, but it was like so simple and, and so quick. So even for your serger, you could couch yarn with the beading foot or again, a string of pearls. If you were doing bridal wear and you had, uh, you know, yards and yards of veiling, for example, then take your string of pearls and put that all around your, you know, veil for your bridal wear. So how beautiful that would be. Now quickly, I will mention that what a fun project this I thought would be. Uh, this fabric is printed with these stripes. It uh, looks to me like a horizon, I guess, like that, a horizon. Um, so how fun it is to use a variety of uh, trims and beads and experiment. Um, but then I'm following the stripes of the fabric with um, the various beads and yarns. And again, this fluffy yarn, my stitches just bury right in there. You don't even see it at all. So this string of pearls, as I'm experimenting, I always like using a contrasting thread when I experiment so then I can really see where my stitches are going. And then after, if I'm happy with that, then I would switch out my thread to the invisible. Or again, if I use like a red here, you wouldn't even see that. Uh, line of stitching. Here I use this uh, two uh, rows of this like rat tail cord and I just zigzagged with the narrow foot, zigzagged one row down and then I zigzag, zigzagged the other row, just butted it on right together so it looks like one big uh, piece of cording but it's actually two separate pieces. And then here I actually um, decided my zigzag, instead of going to either side of that cording, I used uh, the uh, multi-stitch zigzag that actually has a stitch in the middle of the cord. And that's fine to use for your multi-step zigzag, is fine to use for your cords and your yarns. You wouldn't want to use it for your beads, of course, but for your cords and your yarns, again, no problem. You could even use um, decorative stitches to put down this uh, cord because it's okay to stitch through it. So I'll just do this little sample quickly because it's uh, quite fun. So here is my fabric. It's all uh, again delineated uh, in the printing. So I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to then take some cord and some yarns and follow the lines of that. Now, I've got this nice fuzzy cord and yes, normally I would match my um, thread, but in this case, it's just gonna bury down no problem at all. And because I'm going through the yarn, then yes, I could uh, turn up my speed and not need to worry about hitting anything. 
so this I thought would be a fun project to embellish your fabric first and then cut this out and make like a little zippy pouch out of it or or something like that you know just put a zipper here sew up the two sides how simple and easy is that and maybe you want to use some of our beautiful Madeira uh, metallic threads and and really make those stitches uh, stand out so it could be a lot of great surface embellishment now, because I've got this, um, you know, more flimsy fabric here, I have my piece of stabilizer to just give me a little extra support when I do all that zigzagging down. On this uh, denim scrap here, I, I didn't bother putting some stabilizer because that denim fabric is heavy enough to support this uh, row of stitching and these beads. The stabilizer scraps, of course, come from, as always, my fabulous Madeira Stabilizer Starter Pack is a fantastic uh, resource for so many different types of stabilizers. Uh, there's the Tearaway and there's the Iron-On uh, Water Soluble Stabilizer. So it's great. They give you really good uh, big sizes, uh, big sheets to experiment with. And after I'm done my embroidery and all my other projects, I save like every little scrap and then this is what I do my test samples on. So it's a really, again, funny, easy project to do that way. Oh, and then I wanted to demo that here, if, if this is my quilt, for example, or again, my little coaster, here's my quilt sandwich of my backing, my batting, and my top. And all I do is literally just butt this cording right up against that raw edge and this is where okay maybe i want to do a wider zigzag so i know i really get to the edges of that cord so you just experiment and butt that on it goes really simple and if you find if you've uh missed a little spot then you can always go back. I didn't end up missing. Oh, and that I didn't end up getting. So, okay, great. If I see, oh, I didn't quite, uh, my layers weren't all together. I could always go back and pull that over a little more, take it back to the machine and zigzag it again. If I use matching thread, you're really not going to see that little repair there at all. But it's a really fun, easy, um, quick technique to do. So any questions, any concerns? I hope that helped uh, answer some questions. They're really fun feet to go and experiment with. Again, contact your Janome dealer. Uh, things where I am, at least in Ontario, uh, many of the Janome dealers are allowing you to book appointments so you can go in and shop for half an hour or so uh, by yourself, or there may be one other person there. So you'll keep social distancing. So call your dealer and see what they're uh, offering regarding again coming in the store or I know many are still doing um, curbside pickup if you're more comfortable with that uh, or even that they'll ship to you as well so very very fun so oh and lastly I wanted to mention yes because these are nine millimeter uh, feet that I'm demoing right here in your fabulous accessories case I've mentioned this a couple of times the black accessories case that's available for nine millimeter uh, feet this uh, L2 wide beading foot will fit in this accessory tray. If you are a 15,000 owner, uh, you already have this tray and you have all of these feet. If you purchase the, the case separately, yours is not going to come with the feet. Those are all separate. But there, there is a slot right here for the L2 foot. And a number of the other feet that I've already talked about in the various Janome HQ presentations like the applique foot and the cording foot, the border guide foot. And as always too, a great uh, resource for more information about all of these feet and all things Janome. Uh, make sure you go to the Janome Life blog. Uh, type in Janome Life uh, dot wordpress.com in your browser and there's a whole slew of posts there's a little uh, search box off to the right and you can type in whatever foot you're interested in like the beating feet and up come all the posts related to that subject and then as well for to review the various uh, past Janome HQ Instagram lives you can check out the Janome HQ IGTV icon that's on the main page of Genome HQ Instagram. 
the, it looks like a little TV with antenna. <laughs> and as well, then you can go to the Janome HQ YouTube channel to watch all the previous posts. And I still have to put up K's. I will do that later today. And then I'll put up um, today's uh, over the weekend as well. So you can go back to review it. So I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you back here, Janome HQ, at 1 o'clock on Monday for the M foot. So I will see you then. Bye. <laughs>